after Beijing, I thought to myself, I have to look a little bit better when they put that <laughs> that metal around my neck. And as soon as they put it around my neck, I just it was just instinct. you would feel here it's going to take something superhuman to prevent an American gold heading for gold which everybody predicted and the prediction is going to come true it's gold for the United States it's silver for Canada it's bronze for the Netherlands Just, you know enjoy the sport and enjoy being with the team and being a part of the team um, and have fun and if you're passionate about it and if you know your goal is to do well then work hard at it because you can do well and you can take it however far you want to. And we're all really just going for the same goal and that's getting Olympic gold medal. Even though it doesn't matter he makes millions of dollars and you know I was living with a host family at the time not so glamorous. But it was cool to know that, you know, he was, saw this medal, and that was the first time he had seen the Beijing medal, and he was inspired. And, you know, it's crazy. You never know who you're going to inspire. It's nuts, I'm telling you. Kobe Bryant, I mean. <laughs> who would have thought? Yeah. So then after the Olympics, you know, we did all this fun media stuff. I got to meet all these other athletes and stars. And then I thought to myself, all right, well, cool. I did the Olympics. That was fun. What next? And I, 2008, there was a little bit of a recession in that fall. I applied to 50 jobs. I got two interviews, and I got zero jobs. Yeah. And I thought to myself, come on, people. I just won an Olympic gold medal. Hire me. You know? I know what hard work is. I know what teamwork is. And literally, it was, it was really tough and kind of a little bit of a blow to my confidence. And then the best blessing in disguise happened. My coach ended up sending out a boat to San Diego, which is where I was at the time. And I said, all right, well, sure, I'll just get in the boat. And I remember going out for a row in San Diego and just seeing, like, you know, just being outside and on the hills and everything. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is what I was meant to do. I love this. You know, people had said before, oh, what a sacrifice you're making. And I just felt so blessed. I was like, no, this is not a sacrifice. This is something that I love. And I'm so happy to do it. And so I had a wonderful time that year. I really just soaked up every moment. I, really, I worked hard again. I ended up racing in a pair, which is a little bit more of a challenge than the women's eight. Um, but I saw great success in it, and it was fantastic. 2010, again, we won lots of medals. I was athlete of the year that year. So that was really fun. And then 2011, again, the US winning streak is still continuing. And uh, so that was about a year ago that this 2011 World Championships happened. And then the unexpected happened. I herniated my disc in my back. I blew out my back. And let me tell you, that is one of the most painful things that you can go through. I literally, it's, so it's basically like you have all these discs and in between the discs there's like this gel that kind of, you know, you can be flexible. Yeah, that gel had enough of my rowing and decided to just, I just took a break and said, all right, we're out of here. And it actually was like hitting the nerve in my spinal cord. And uh, that was very, very unpleasant. Um, and, you know, there's this great quote by Theodore Roosevelt that I'm going to read to you guys that kind of sums up how I felt. <laughs> Nothing in the world is worth having or worth doing unless it means effort, pain, and difficulty. 
I have never in my life envied a human being who led an easy life. I have envied a great many people who led difficult lives and led them well. And I read that and I was like, you know what? This is going to be tough. I don't know if I'm going to make the Olympic team, but you know what? I'm going to be here. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to try and get back into it. And so it was, it was a tough time. Um, I was in a lot of pain, but I got some cortisone shots, did a lot of physical therapy, and during this time spent a lot of time on the bike, cross-training. A lot of time means three to four hours a day. That is a lot of biking. <laughs> I had all sorts of biking shorts at this point. I was, felt very fashionable. Um, <laughs> But it was really, really tough, and it's very tough to motivate yourself when you're seeing your teammates out on the water and you're just sitting indoors on the bike. But that winter, I decided I would persevere, and it didn't matter. There was no way that you know, anyone was gonna take this from me. That spring, I went from, I finally started to get better, and then I went from winning all of these great races in the pair to all of a sudden, I was placing fifth and sixth. And it looked like I was barely going to make the team. And uh, we went back to Princeton, we did a lot of racing, and it just was not looking good. Um, luckily, I believed in myself. I believed that I could do this. And with a lot of seat racing and a lot of sweat and tears, luckily no blood, um, I was able to make the Olympic team. It was really by the grace of God that I made it. Thank you. The end. No, just kidding. Um, it really, it was, it was the hardest struggle that, that I had been through. And I think part of it was that maybe I had just taken for granted all of these wins and all of the joy that, you know, I had been having and the success. And so finally, you know, it was like, all right, you know, Whatever life throws at you, you just go and you just deal with it and you do the best that you can. And then once I made it, the next step was, all right, what's our goal? Let's go get another gold medal. But at this point, you know, with all the success that the U.S. team had had, at this point we had a lot of pressure on us. We had a lot of media. There was a lot of hype. And let me tell you, it's really fun when you're doing these magazine interviews or this and that, but then in the back of your mind, you're a little scared. You're thinking, all right, cool. This is fun that all eyes are on me. But what if? What if? Um, and part of that is just knowing that you put in the time and the work and knowing that you can do it. And all of the people who believe in you know that you can do it. So it was great going to London because, well, we did it. <laughs> and we led from start to finish and it didn't matter who the rivalries were, it didn't, and none of that mattered. It just mattered who was in the boat, and we were just very focused on ourselves. We stayed internal, and we just established that, you know, we were the best out there. So it was great, and instead of, you know, having this inspirational trophy, now I got a real medal, you know, a little bit bigger. I got to, uh, yeah! <laughs> It's pretty heavy, I'll let, I'll let you guys hold it, but yeah, there you go. So let me tell you, last time in Beijing when uh, I won, I actually was like crying a lot on the podium, and I thought to myself, okay, if I win this time, you have to, you have to look good, you have to look a little bit better, you know, you have to just <laughs> smile, and oh, thank you, thank you. But as soon as they put this heavy metal around my neck, like a baby, I just started bawling. I was like, oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Ruined all the pictures again. <laughs> but, you know, it was great. And uh, we got to do, again, a little bit more media. And it was so awesome being in London and having that energy of all the people around us. And, you know, they were taking all these pictures. And, you know, we took pictures with little kids, big kids, older people, everybody. And they kept saying to me, oh, aren't you tired of taking these pictures? And I said, nobody wants to take my picture. They want to take it once every four years. So yeah, come on. <laughs> Let's take a picture with you too. And like signing autographs, 
Yeah, sure, I'll like, get a cramp in my hand. No one wants my autograph the other years. <laughs> so it's really been, been fantastic, and I feel very blessed that, you know, I got, I got to not just go once, but go again. And uh, really enjoyed all of my experiences in the Olympic Village. Uh, this time I didn't, I did see Kobe again, and he was like, oh, hey, you know, I pretended that we were like old friends, you know. <laughs> um, but I also met uh, Sir Paul McCartney from the Beatles, so that was really fun. Yeah, <laughs> woo! He didn't sing to me though, next time. Um, but I did see him and I went over to him, I like held up my gold medal like, is it okay if I come talk to you? And he was like, oh yeah, oh yeah, come on over. And so, you know, we're chatting and everything and he's like, oh, you know, what sport, what race were you in? And I said, oh, the women's eight, you know, I'm from the US. And he was like, oh my gosh, I watched that race. And I'm thinking, Paul McCartney watched my Olympic race? Like, wow, I, this doesn't get any better than that. And he said, you know, can I give you a kiss? And I was like, sure, <laughs> sure, come on. Big kiss and a hug. And it was so great because he had all these people in the, this was at, uh, we were at track and field. And he had all the people who were around us applaud me. And I was like, oh, okay, no, well, let's applaud him. I, I can't sing to save my life. But if you guys start to fall asleep, I might start to sing. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but what I do want to say, though, is it's all about the journey. And it's all about finding your passion. And you don't have to be an Olympian. You don't have to be an Olympic gold medalist. You don't have to even be an athlete. But it's all about finding something that you love. And, you know, when you find that thing and you work hard at it, you can be great at it, you know, and also continuing to inspire others around you. I think for me that has been one of the most important lessons. I never ever thought after getting this that I would be an athlete, but it found me and, and I've worked hard and I've loved it. So with that, I want to say thank you guys very much for listening to me. I see someone out there is flexing. Come on, flex for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm so, oh. I'm actually really sorry that the PowerPoint didn't work. I had some, I had some fun slides on there, but it's okay. You guys got to look at me for the 20 minutes anyway. But, um, so I wanted to open it up to any questions that you guys may have. And also, let me tell you, sorry, before we begin, I went and spoke in my high school a few years ago, and the first question they asked me was, do you drive a Lamborghini? <laughs> I was like, no, I have a Ford Taurus in the parking lot, but it has power windows, okay? <laughs> I bet you those kids had better cars than I do, but you know, rowing's not a big uh, money sport, but it doesn't matter because I love it. So, with that being, yes. With that being said, yes, I will take some questions. I'll come up, I'll come up to this beautiful garden that they put down here. <laughs> okay, yes. Hi. Hi. Oh, nice, I love Miami. <laughs> Ooh, I think that my biggest failure was being complacent. Um, you know, I just, I, you know, it's kind of, Tough when you're on top and you're like, oh, I, I feel like a million bucks. Oh, I'm, I'm great. Nothing, nothing could go wrong. And I think that was, um, that was my biggest failure. And kind of, you know, sometimes I wish I had been a little bit more humble about it and just kind of, you know what, just put your head down and go to work. Um, so I think I wish I had done that a little bit better um, in terms of even taking care of my body and, you know, going to physical therapy even beforehand and everything involved in that, so, yes. Oh, hey. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, I don't like to have a too much of a set ritual because Sometimes I have this fear that 
if I do have a ritual and I'm not able to do it, then like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? Um, but yes, I, I definitely do pray beforehand. And I also like to listen to music to kind of get pumped up. But um, sometimes I actually am so excited to go that I need music to like calm me down. <laughs> um, so I think that that would be pretty much my only ritual. Um, I also take maybe a moment to reflect on all the people who have supported me. And I take a moment to reflect about you know, all the hard work that I've put in and that kind of gives me that confidence. Yes? Who inspired me the most? I know, I know, this is one of those questions that, I'm probably my parents. Um, my, actually, what I didn't tell you is that I'm from Hungary. I was born in Hungary, and we immigrated to the US when I was two years old, and my parents came over with $1,000. Um, but they worked hard, and they, you know, they lived the American dream, right, you know? And their work ethic really, you know, hit home with me, and so I wanted to be like that, too. Um, luckily, my parents have now made it to $2,000, so <laughs> just kidding. I'm just joking. But really, I would say my parents have definitely been the ones to, to inspire me. Yes? What's going through my head when I'm rowing? Well, um, I'm usually very focused. And the other thing um, that you couldn't see from the picture is that, so I'm in a women's eight, where there are eight rowers, and then facing the rowers is a girl called the coxswain. And she's the one who steers the boat and also makes the calls. So she says like, okay, you know, we're half a boat down on Canada and you know, we need to do like a power 10. <laughs> um, you know, or she tells us where we are in the race. So most of my time is spent like listening to her and ignoring the pain in my legs. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, lots of Miami. What, the weather was not good enough down there? <laughs> oh, you know, we should move the, this down there. <laughs> Did I ever have failure in the back of my mind? Oh, you know what? I, I don't think we would be human if we didn't have failure in the back of our head. And you know what? And that's, that's what drives us as well. You know, that fear of failure. You know, I, I don't want to let anybody down. I don't want to let my family down, myself, you know, my faith, everything. And so, yeah, there is, there is that little nagging thought that, you know, I don't want to fail. But you know what? I'd rather go out there, give it my all. And, and if I fail, at least I tried, you know? Go US. Go US. <laughs> Anyone over here? Yeah. Oh, yes, over there. Um, my biggest obstacle um, would probably have been this, this herniated disc. Um, it was, it's one of those injuries in rowing. It's actually quite a common uh, injury, but it can really just end your career, your rowing career right then and there. And even worse, I mean, you can end up with permanent damage. And so, you know, my first assessment was, okay, you know, I, I messed up my back really badly. What, what can I do to at least, you know, get walking again or drive a car? Because even those activities, simple activities, I couldn't put a plate into the microwave because I couldn't hold the plate because I couldn't be in this position. So I think that was, you know, my one biggest obstacle. Um, and I'm really glad that I was able to both recover and somehow get back into a boat. Yes. I'm tired, man. You know, it's so funny. You know, we finished the race in London. I'm still panting because I'm tired. And the first reporter says, are we going to see you in Rio? And I'm like, oh, man. I just put that medal around my neck, you know. <laughs> um, no, you know, we'll see. Four years is definitely a very long time. And, you know, I hate to admit it, but I'm getting a little bit older. And, uh... Well, we'll see. It, it, is, it is tough to give up this lifestyle, though. It's so fun. You know, you travel the world, you meet all these great people, you get to exercise all day. Um, so, 
We'll see. And Rio seems like it would be a great party. <laughs> yes. Oh. What was that? Do I lift? Do I lift weights? I mean, come on. Come on. Do I need to bust out the gun show again? Of course I lift weights. Why? Are we going to have like a squat test here over in the front? No, um, we do lift weights about three times a week, but um, most of our practice is spent um, rowing and also running. Yes? I do know Michael Phelps. He is, yeah, go USA. He's actually an amazing athlete. And uh, it's, it's been fun getting to know all of like the swimmers because they're kind of similar sport, you know, water sport, but also it's very like mental sport. Um, so it's been fun to get to know him and Ryan Lochte and Missy Franklin. And so they've, they're, they're cool, you know. But they're also just Olympians, just like me. <laughs> yes? Well, after the Inspirational Award, I, I figured uh, other sports, like ball sports, my hand-eye coordination is just... You know, even now, if we went to go play basketball, I'd probably get injured somehow. Yeah, the ball would go through my hands. Um, no, I really, I, I'm telling you, I wanted to be good at other sports, and I still do, but I'm just going to stick to rowing. <laughs> yes. Oh, sorry. Yes. It, well, either one of you. Oh, hello, Jamaica. Shaba. <laughs> Um, the negativity that I have felt hasn't been really necessarily going into sports besides the fact that I knew myself that at some sports I just was not going to be any good. Um, but actually, sometimes it's, it's tough with teammates. And, you know, it's tough because you're, you all want the same goal. You know, at the end of the day, we all want a gold medal and represent the USA. And, sometime, and to get into that boat is really part of the, the tough part. And so that fine line between competitor, you know, we're competing with each other, and teammate has been really kind of a, a tough line to walk. And so I think that's where um, some negativity has, has come in. But at the end of the day, we just all remember that, hey, you know, one team, one goal. And so, you know, let's get the goal. Yes, sir. From New York? OK, hello. Oh, Shaba. Okay, yeah. Just kidding. Just kidding. That was it. Was a short one because you're also from New York. Yes. Mhm. Mm <laughs> well, I definitely think it will be quite a challenge um, once I'm done with rowing. I originally got my degree in criminology and I wanted to go work for the FBI. I've always been like an intense person. I wanted to kick down doors and say, FBI, <laughs> I'm here. Uh, yeah. But then those other three letters, the USA kind of came into the way. Um, so I think maybe now when I would kick down the door, it'd be like, USA, FBI, you know? <laughs> um, no, I, I wanted to get into, criminal, into criminology and um, criminal law, but um, right now I'm actually, I am taking a job. You will all be very happy to know. I actually got a coaching job, so um, I will be coaching in San Diego. <laughs> Yay! My parents are thrilled. <laughs> well, there were some questions in the way back. Yes, I see a hand. Nice. I'm sorry, say that again? How about you come on down here? Do 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 
I'm sorry I can't offer you any money or prizes up here. Oh, we have a piano. No, I'm just kidding. Come on, you can come down further. Sorry, yes. Okay. Um, the question was about my routine and diet and uh, exercise. Believe it or not, I eat about 4,000 calories a day rowing. Yeah, that is a lot of calories. And it has to be very healthy calories, too. So I can't just eat a pint of Ben and Jerry's because that's not going to make me feel very good. Um, so it's actually kind of tough to get a really good balanced meal and get all those calories in there. Um, Okay, and I eat a little bit of Ben and Jerry's at the end of the day, uh, but uh, it's, it's not that strict, but it's mostly like, you know, what food is going to make me feel good. Um, that's been kind of the biggest challenge in, in terms of food. So, yes, back there. Oh, oh, we got two competing. All right, you can both have the piano. <laughs> oh, you, you make your way down slowly, and we'll take one up there. Okay, my is... Oh, good loud voice. I like it. Or maybe you have a microphone, too. No. Yeah, this is a question for Justin. What advice would you give him um, in the next step of how to do it? Um, spiritually, I think that the most important thing has been when, you know, life has thrown, my gosh, I really hate that expression, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. But, but it, you know, when, when doors have closed, you know, others have opened, and I think part of it is keeping that positivity. And I think that's the same way that um, I have let the Lord into my life, is that you know, when those doors closed, I said, all right, then there's a master plan for me, and that's fine. And which, which door is going to open? And really taking advantage of that. So that would be pretty much my answer. Yes. Oh, nice. I've never run a marathon. What are my favorite songs to listen to? Because you need um, uh, two hours worth of a marathon to, to fill up. All right, where should we begin? Uh, no, I actually, I really like, we listen to a lot of um, techno and like electronic music. Um, and a lot of remixes, Florence and the Machine, that kind of, that kind of music. Um, I really like music that has, uh, you know, not to sound corny, but at least somewhat of a positive message. You know, because it, it gets me pumped up, and, and I like it. Um, and if it has a fast beat. So that's hope, hopefully that answers your question. Well, you can come hang out and check out my playlist afterwards, OK? <laughs> yes. Oh, nice. Hello. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, what experience was it that made me say? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, t I, okay, let me tell you, in the ninth grade, when you're this height, you're at least a foot taller than everybody else, especially as a girl. You know, all the boys are still growing. They're all five foot seven, <laughs> five feet. <laughs> and, you know, no, it's, it's really tough because then I would always just, like, walk around, like, and it didn't help. My best friend, Leilani, Bless her, she is four foot ten. And, and, you know, I once saw a picture of the two of us walking together, and I was like, oh, man, Leilani, you're going to have to walk over there, because we look so bad walking together. But it's, it's really tough, you know, and, and part of, I think, the struggles in high school is growing into your skin. And for me, it was, you know, finally athletics that helped me. And, you know, I think, like, in high school, you know, some kids are overweight, and it's, you know, genetic, and so... They're really struggling. One of my teammates, actually, who was in the boat in Beijing, was very overweight as a child. And she said, you know, I was just always hungry. I couldn't help it. And so sports really helped her, like, find her energy. And then all of a sudden, you know, next thing you know, she's worked hard and became an Olympic champion. So, you know, it's, what was that? 
And they, and they teased me, yeah. But it's okay. Who has the last laugh now? Yeah. And let me tell you, wait, one, one more thing. I will get to your question in one second. Let me tell, oh, you don't have to sit down, though. Um, you know what was so funny is that, so in high, you know, I guess, you know, everyone gets teased in high school. I definitely got teased a lot. I, you know, didn't wear the coolest clothes. You know, now, now Ralph Lauren gave me some nice clothes so I can wear that. But, um, uh, we don't need to applaud that, that's okay. But, uh, it, it was so funny after we won in Beijing, all of the people from high school who weren't my friends, but wanted to now be my friends, all Facebooked friend me, and I said, all right, you know what, I will be the bigger person, I will accept you, and uh, I will appreciate all of your support, but it's definitely very funny when, you know, you see who comes around like 10 years later, but, sorry, go on, yes. Hi, my name is Joel Hi. Nice. It was a little bit cold there, so you came out here. No, just kidding. Oh, <laughs> not like in Miami. Well, I had kind of already been getting involved in the U.S. team and kind of like feeling out how the whole system worked um, in college. Um, I wasn't sure, even though I wasn't sure in college whether I wanted to do this full time or not, but I started kind of like, okay, well, how much money do they get? Or, you know, where are they training and how does it work? So leading up to my graduation, I was pretty knowledgeable about how everything worked. And then from there, you know, there were definitely some surprises. Um, but I, I would say that was probably most of my investigation was during my collegiate years, which were not that long ago, 2004. I mean, it's practically yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yes. Oh, you want, oh, okay, ready? So we go backwards. You know, my friends joke with me, how many hours a day do you go backwards? I'm like, too many. And I sit on my butt the whole time. Okay, so this is embarrassing, thanks. But it's <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> yes, over there. My next goal? Um, well, I mean, I really haven't decided, um, but I, I want to try out this coaching and I want to see if I'm even good at it. Who knows, I might get frustrated and <laughs> tell the kids, I've had it with you. No, I won't do that. Um, but I think, I think I'm going to try coaching and I do want to continue training for maybe one more year, go to a world championship, which will be um, in Chungju, South Korea. So, it should be, yeah! Yes. Because rowing is huge in South Korea, let me tell you. No, I'm just kidding. But so, yeah, they're putting on a really big world championship there, and I've never been to Korea, so let's, you know, try it out. Yes, over there. Did I run into difficulties in the areas? Have I ever picked up any culture? I'm sorry. Oh, cultural experiences. Well, actually, um, being in Beijing, that was quite a cultural experience. Um, they, the people of Beijing were, they were just so ecstatic to have the Olympics there. And I, they definitely loved seeing a six foot two blonde white woman. And they took many pictures. They didn't know, I wasn't even wearing US gear. They didn't even care who I was. They were just like, oh my God, they're like petting me. They, were, they loved it. And I was like, all right, cool. I'm in Beijing. They love me here, I guess. Um, so I think that was one of the, a little bit of a culture shock. In addition, um, I don't know if you had heard, but in Beijing they brought in a lot of uh, taxi drivers from all over the country who did not, you know, some of them did not know Beijing very well. And so my Chinese was terrible, <laughs> I know. And so uh, that was a lot of um, lost in translation. So 
So I ended up at some strange places. I was like, oh, I don't think this is the basketball arena. <laughs> yes. Over there. Yes, you. Yes, young lady. Oh, all right. You. It doesn't matter. Yes. Hello. Will you go with me then to the world championships? All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do I relieve my stress? Yes. What else am I good at? Uh, t I'm telling you, I'm not good at much else. <laughs> no, um, how do I relieve my stress? Pretty much I just, uh, rowing makes me nice and tired, so sometimes I get hyper and then that will uh, help calm me down because I'm tired, but in terms of stress, I just, um, just mentally kind of get into the zone and just remember all of the people, the Lord, everyone believing in me, and I think that really helps. Yes. Oh, nice. I want to know what your other job that you and The job that I did not take was actually working in criminology in London, uh, which would have been a really cool experience. Um, it was working in the courts on this experiment that they were doing. Um, and so it would have been cool, but I knew that I was not destined for it. Um, my other hobbies are uh, napping and eating. Yeah. Those, are, those are good hobbies. Yes, sir. You know what? Next question. <laughs> I'm not even going to answer that. Oh, come and help say, good job, everybody. You're doing great. <laughs> yes, in the back. Um, was it a big surprise when I got to the Olympics? I wouldn't say it was a surprise because I knew where I was going. But, um, no, it was definitely surreal. You know, I, I had only seen it on TV, and I'd heard of these great athletes and, you know, seeing people get medals. So it was definitely surreal to know that, you know, wow, that's me. But, yes. That was, that was my parents. You missed that question. All right, next one. Oh, mentors. Mentors. Um... I mean, I don't think there has been like a particular person. It's, it's interesting just with rowing, there's so many teammates and so many different boats that pretty much I would say my, my teammates kind of inspire me. Sorry. Oh, of course we'll take a picture. Not right now, but afterwards with this great shrubbery. Yes. Oh. People that influenced me, that was kind of... Oh, books. <laughs> Did I mention I nap a lot? <laughs> no. Um, well, I'm blanking right now, but I will get back to you. I will. I swear I will. I will remember something. Yes. Yes, you can try on the medal. Um, how did I mentally prepare for the Olympics? Uh, pretty much just all of having confidence in all of the hard work that I had put in. Um, that really kind of relaxed me. And even when we were at the starting line of the Olympics, I, I knew that I had put in so many hours that, you know, the only thing to do now is, is race my heart out. So, yes. Well. Not much. They they melted with the napping. No, I'm sorry. What? Um, 
Yes, in high school I definitely had to balance the two, but it really helped me. Um, it just, it helped me, I knew, okay, I have to go to practice, and as soon as practice is over, I have to hit the books. I have to start studying, and I like to procrastinate like everybody else, and I realized that, you know, if I have this meet this weekend, or, you know, going to this basketball game, even though I'm sitting on the bench, I still have to get my homework done. So it definitely, you know, my social life then suffered, um, but it was for the better, and I was able to achieve my goals because of that. Yes? Have a, had a challenge in the country? Um, okay, well the first question was, do my parents support what I do? Actually, funny enough, when I got that job offer out of college, they were like, and you're doing what? You're rowing? Oh, okay. And uh, they, they were a little hesitant at first, uh, when I first started, but then I started going to races and I made the team, and so then of course they were very supportive and they loved traveling to all the races with me. So actually now it's funny because when I told them, you know, this might be my last year or two, um, then they're like, oh, well, but we still want to keep like traveling around and going to the races. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm glad I'm doing this for you guys' uh, entertainment. But, um, but no, my parents, I've been very lucky and blessed that my parents have been so supportive. They don't really have a choice. Um, and your second question was, have I gotten lost in the U.S.? Yes, in Boston all the time. Terrible driving. Yes. Can you tell? <laughs> yes, I am an only child. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Yes. How did I get so tall? <laughs> wow. My parents put me on a stretcher, and they just kept cranking away. Um, that's a fantastic, that's, that's up there with the Lamborghini question. No, I'm kidding. Um, actually, my, both of my parents are very tall, so I, I knew it was coming. Yes? From what age did I, did I start rowing? Um, wait, I'm sorry, what? Oh, what age am I going to coach? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, they're going to be in high school. Um, yes, from, yeah, from freshman year to senior year. So, yes. In high school, did I have problems being tall? Yes, I did. I answered that one. Where were you? No, just kidding. <laughs> oh, did I have, like, other problems being tall? Um, I looked very skinny. That was most of my problem, and just being tall and having my shoulders hunched over. Still working on that one. My mom yells at me. Yes. Okay. From um, well, the flight's about an hour and a half, so an hour and a half. <laughs> Are you paying for the flight? Cause let's go. I know. I think a very long time. That sounds very painful. I'm in pain just thinking about it. All right, we're going to take one more question. All right, yes, sir. Have I ever had any what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, my hearing aid isn't on. Oh, endorsements. Ha <laughs> ha. Do you want to endorse me? <laughs> um, actually, that's one of the tough things about rowing is because it's not a high media sport, it's been very difficult. It took me eight years to get an Oakley sponsorship. So, and even then it's not a very like, big sponsorship. Um, but I, I get some glasses. Um, I also work with a small company that makes uh, uniforms so, I mean, I'm, I'm trying, but it's, it's kind of a tough sell, only because, you know, I don't get much TV time. But I'm working on it. But anyway, okay, so I think that was the last question. I will be, I will be around here somewhere. They're going to they're gonna place me somewhere. You guys can come check out the medal, check out the inspirational trophy. I know you guys want to see that one. It's very, I know. It's very nice.
Um, and I, you know, I'll take some pictures with you guys or whatever you want. If you have more questions, then let's do it. All right. Thank you guys so much for having me. Thank you. You guys were awesome.